a resource. They are something good for us, for our history, for our philosophy, for our um, living. <clears throat> okay, so you can also go to the next uh, slide. Here you are some uh, just few examples because our research uh, is very very long. It uh, it started from uh, uh, my PhD thesis in Rome in 2014. Uh, so there are also some publication I show you uh, in the last slide. You can find more uh, more thing about. So this is just few example of these possi possible uh, possibly um, operations uh, using photography, using art, using uh, video art, uh, using hybrid, uh, um, of course, uh, uh, vision uh, techniques. Uh, on the left, you can see the, the, the former cattle market of Padua, and on the right, you can see uh, the Asian Basilica of Pestum in Italy. Uh, now, the, um, the former cattle market of Padua is, uh, is an area um, which belong to the municipality, to Padova municipality, uh, which use like uh, an, as a landfill because they used to put over there all the um, waste um, coming from uh, the demolition uh, process on, on, on the streets, on the infrastructure, um, on the bridges. So uh, all those uh, stone and concrete pieces, uh, elements you, you, you see in the photo, uh, of course, are a, a sort of, of, of a inert uh, landfill, no? of a stone and concrete landfill. Uh, the municipality, also the, the common people, the inhabitants, uh, look at it as a problem, as a, an unacknowledged place, a place, uh, a refused place, because it's not, it's not beautiful. But uh, I, I, I believe, we believe that uh, if we are able to put a different glance, to take a different glance on it as a sort of contemporary archaeological site, uh, immediately you can imagine uh, that this uh, great uh, hole, black hole in our uh, municipality territory uh, can, uh, can be transformed into a resource putting some light uh, at night, putting some um, path to walk uh, among the, the elements. So really interesting and really, uh, uh, yes, different from uh, the consolidated process, uh, operation we have in, in such a place. Uh, okay, next, uh, please. <coughs> uh, of course, uh, this uh, suggestion um, is not something new, it's not an invention, but uh, is uh, it recalled to us uh, by the, the more typical and basic uh, uh, wreck that are the, the submarine wreck. So there something that we uh, lost because uh, a ship, uh, a boat uh, fall down in the bottom of the sea. It's, it's a wreck, it's a waste. But uh, in the 90% of these cases, uh, the wreck, the submarine wreck, um, has the power to, to become uh, a resource, an oasis, and biological and also a biotic uh, bomb. Uh, if you take this paradigm, this metaphor, and we put in our uh, land, in the inland, so this photo uh, is about some boat, some wreck, uh, some decommissioned boat in Venice, but they put them in this uh, grass, green grass uh, near the lagoon. And uh, immediately we recognize that uh, these shapes um, are building a, a landscape. So why not our landfill, our um, compromised areas, uh, can be treated uh, like uh, an inland wreck which can explode of uh, biotic experience and, and of course uh, um, also other activities for the municipality, for the, for the people, for the communities, for our contemporary communities. Okay, next, uh, next one. So our, uh, our method uh, aims to 
to put uh, in place to, to, to play, you can say also, like uh, an old memory game card from the 80s, uh, with all these refused elements in our territory, um, the commission infrastructure, the commissioned buildings, uh, ruined buildings, uh, um, amount of wrecks, amount of fragments, um, like new words to build a new vocabulary of our contemporary landscape. If we, I repeat, because it's important, if uh, we look at them like uh, words, like letters, like notes uh, to use, to compose, to build our contemporary landscape, we immediately um, reduce our waste amount about 40%. <laughs> okay, this research, you can go to the next one, uh, of course, uh, has some outputs. And we um, were used to, to really to, to, to experiment all kind of uh, experiences uh, talking about these themes, because we really believe that they are uh, a very um, important uh, topics for our contemporary life and profession, of course. Uh, we immediately uh, tried to, to write um, two uh, great, huge um, European programs uh, founded by uh, the European Social Fund for the operative regional program in each uh, country. And we won two of them, the data project uh, that was the, the first one in 2017, and the IREX project, uh, which was a sort of second uh, match for the data one. <clears throat> the first one, the data uh, project, uh, focused on uh, the territory scale, the landscape scale. <clears throat> so we were uh, working about abandoned areas and, uh, and um, <clears throat> a abandoned big uh, um, infrastructure in Veneto region, in the northeast part of Italy. The second one, IREX, focused only uh, in, uh, at the architectural scale and uh, on the um, former industrial buildings. Uh, so we can also experiment uh, to how to reuse, if you can see on the, on the last, on the right uh, image, to reuse uh, um, a, and materials, so also um, sands, uh, concrete uh, um, fragments to, to remodelate, to refurbish, to, uh, to make some a sort of a land art for our case study. Um, it's impossible to synthesize uh, and to re resume all of this incredible uh, program because we involved three university, more than 20, uh, research fellowships uh, um, between Italy and other countries, uh, and a uh, lot of companies of uh, profession, professionists and, and companies. So if you, you can also share and have my presentation after this meeting, you can, uh, I put uh, always in, in each slide uh, in the bottom, all the information to, to um, to get uh, more publication about them. <clears throat> the second, um, the second um, tranche we, we, we used to, to, to experiment is, uh, you can go to the, to the next one, uh, <clears throat> um, some workshop and design lab. Um, I put just few images from uh, the last experience in, in Cagliari, in Sardinia, with Elena and Anna from, uh, from Arcoplan. Um, in this case, we were focused uh, um, on two uh, landfill plants in, in Italy. And we try, uh, these are my sketches, to, to is, of course, to reconsider these places not like a, a, a closed area, a, a refused area, but uh, as a public space, uh, of course, uh, respecting all the um, security uh, staff, norms, uh, uh, laws, so um, it's a hard work, but it's possible to, to uh, 
to get this place uh, for the community as well, of, um, especially in the period of the post uh, um, a post management of these uh, landfills uh, and waste uh, uh, plants. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, many uh, car, because this is, was a, um, a demolished car uh, landfill, no? uh, storage uh, for metal uh, fragments and waste elements. Uh, we can also put some, um, car, some of these car uh, hanging on this main entrance, uh, which were um, was uh, designed a new, a, a new uh, like a new a new entrance for the communities, and and we can also uh, ask for example for example from uh, um, from the uh, uh, the um, archaeological heritage uh, of Rome to to hang also pieces of ancient statues or ancient archaeological fragment for architecture. Uh, among the cars. So uh, this is also another operation um, which uh, belong to the field of art, of course, that help us to uh, acknowledge this uh, refused element. If you put uh, the wreck of a car uh, with the ruin, the, the remain of an ancient um, status of architecture, you, you begin to, to learn about the poetry of, uh, and the aesthetic of the, of the fragment of the, of the waste. <clears throat> so it's not something to refuse, but it's something that can generate interesting vision. Um, the third one is uh, working, of course, uh, working on uh, uh, seminaries. You can go to the, to the next one. And uh, we were asked, we were invited by the, for example, the Architect, the architecture, uh, Architects Council of Padova to, to talk uh, about waste architecture last year. We organized two um, um, huge seminaries uh, of many hours each. Uh, and, uh, and I think it, uh, it was a very, very interesting experience. Okay, and you can go also to the, to the next one. Of course, always with Elena and, and uh, Anna. Plan. We are also preparing uh, um, a new uh, uh, thesis uh, uh, workshop laboratory in our uh, department. This is the first uh, uh, master degree thesis in uh, building architecture engineer uh, that was discussed just one, two uh, months ago. So it's the first master degree uh, thesis output for us. And it focuses on uh, um, a huge uh, landfill in the north part of Padua. And um, as you can see from my sketch in the left, uh, on the left side, uh, side of the slide, um, the typical um, amount of, uh, of, of waste of the land uh, that in this case has a sort of triangular uh, plan shape is not uh, um, put uh, in uh, uh, something like an, 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 a, a, a ugly element, a refused element of the territory. Uh, the contrary is underlined by our new infrastructure, as uh, for example, the case of Monte Testaccio in Rome. Monte Testaccio was, uh, we can say, the first case of landfill in history. And uh, it uh, happened that uh, in the, um, in the um, urban uh, process of, uh, of building of, uh, of the Russian Rome, they, they put all uh, the infrastructure and the houses all around this uh, little mount, artificial mountain hill. Uh, and it became an architecture, of course, a 100% architecture of the city. So we, we try to do the same thing and to build a, a, a very uh, strong infrastructure um, on the two or three late um, side of this uh, hill, uh, landfill hill. Um, this great wall uh, lands at the landscape scale, which contains uh, swimming pools, wellness center, a co-working space, uh, commercial malls, car parks. So, a, a really um, anthropized wall, which uh, bring this great artificial structure uh, linked 
with the, the rest of the territory and the landscape. And uh, with the operation also of tapping uh, on the top of this uh, landfill, we can also put some uh, um, sport uh, facilities, uh, sports infrastructure like a uh, uh, beach volley, uh, courtyards, uh, um, and so on. So uh, we, 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 we give the community back, we give back to the community this uh, abandoned and uh, uh, refused place. Okay, of course, all of this uh, kind of experience uh, were uh, disseminated on uh, many scientific publications, uh, starting from, as I told you, the, the SUM, the, the Symposium on Umbar Mining um, Proceedings. I, I put this, in this case, the, the Bergamos one, uh, two years ago. Some um, architectural and engineering uh, magazine like Officina, um, the Detritus uh, Journal One, two monographic uh, book, books. Um, we uh, published uh, the last two years, uh, the IREX One, talking about uh, the IREX program, of course, and the um, Progettare um, Trailit is uh, designing among the wrecks, um, which um, recollect um, all our um, first master degrees thesis about the um, transformation of the former industrial wrecks, uh, abandoned areas and buildings. And of course, the last publication is, as uh, Christina told you before, the special issue of the Detritus the, the Journal, um, which uh, um, contains all the results of the last Sardinia experience uh, in, uh, in Cagliari, about the landfill, the two one I, I showed you before, and about uh, the, of course, the proceedings of our session called uh, Waste Architecture. Okay, this is all. I really thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I hope uh, I, I give you some uh, different glance on, on this uh, topic um, to, to suggest some other segments of research because research proceeds always uh, from segment to segment. So uh, we, I, 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 I like so much to, to, to share with you this uh, uh, small uh, segment of research at the UNIPD, the University of Padova, to merge and to, to be uh, to, to get some other intersection with other uh, international research uh, lines. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try to sh stop sharing. Okay. Um, so very, very, very interesting, Stefanos. Uh, I can see that now the third presenter is also joined us. And I wonder if uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, since the, the last presentation is uh, um, not as much uh, uh, on uh, architect, uh, architect, waste architecture, but it's more on uh, other elements of environmental engineering. I would like perhaps uh, to, uh, to ask uh, um, a few questions to the first two, two presenters. So we have uh, uh, made, um, we have selected uh, uh, some uh, predefined uh, predefined questions so um, uh, so for uh, these are for uh, Antonio and for uh, uh, Stefanos so, so I'd like to ask um, uh, in your opinion uh, which networks of actors and organizations uh, can contribute to the globalization of the narratives of waste architecture both of you have uh, have presented uh, the this issue very strongly the need for uh, creating uh, and and uh, uh, promoting waste architecture is uh, a real uh, science, I would say, uh, real uh, profession. So can, uh, uh, can you um, articulate on uh, what next, so who could be the champions, who could be the actors that should drive uh, waste architecture? Uh, maybe starting from, uh, from Antonio. Well, I think that we should feel uh, responsible. Uh, I, I didn't know that detail 
40% of the waste in the world is generated by the built environment. We must acknowledge that. And the built environment has already a quite powerful uh, network of factors. And we, we, we just need to be aware of that. And, and we, out of the blue, will deal with 40% of the, of the problem. Now, engaging with uh, uh, political level policy making, it's uh, also very important. And for me, the third the leg of this um, um, uh, possible solution is definitely um, make people know what, is, what are the consequences of the waste. And when I say people, it's because most of these situations are happening in urban areas. Um, so urban areas and people are uh, connected uh, and, 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 and it's very interesting how some research actually that we are conducting in the group deal with the fact of uh, how ignorant people can be with the impact of their waste when they throw something away, when, uh, how ignorant they can be. Uh, it, it, uh, whether they blind or they think that the earth is going to uh, absorb all that waste. So I think that could be maybe the three um, main elements. Uh, ourselves in the built environment, uh, engaging with politicians and making people know um, what are the consequences of waste. And Stefanos? Yes, I, I, can, I, I can tell about my, um, our uh, experience here. Uh, we, I think it's, uh, uh, there are two, um, two fields, the, the private one and the, and the public one. Um, starting from the, from the public one, that is, uh, is the field I, I work in, uh, is that, for example, this uh, new uh, faculty, this new school of engineer um, and architecture, this uh, hybrid, uh, institutes of uh, formation of uh, high education uh, were at first uh, uh, very um, uh, criticized because uh, um, you are not an architect, you are not an engineer, uh, we, are, we are getting some professional figures that uh, we don't know how to, to employ. But after a few years, we immediately um, recognize and, uh, and uh, understand that uh, um, with this uh, paradigm, with this topic of the waste increasing, in, uh, of course, in our life, uh, a figure uh, who came out, comes out from this hybrid uh, formation education, both in architecture and in engineer, is, the, is the, uh, of course, the, um, the, um, the best figure uh, able to to bring the problems together and to and to solve um, a landfill problem in, into a landscape uh, matter, a landscape opportunity, for example, and uh, and we also have the proof of this because uh, um, building and 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 um, constructing this uh, this, uh, for example, two European research project. We, we, we won the first, uh, the first uh, level of, of, of a funding, for example. It, this is a, a sign, this is a, a, a proof that uh, the European uh, commissions, for example, the European uh, uh, fund uh, is searching uh, this kind of competence center in our territory and uh, that uh, they, they can found, uh, found them uh, as well to, to work in this uh, in this direction. Uh, so I think the, that uh, um, building the um, the teaching equip and uh, and uh, the formation education offer of these hybrid schools now is uh, is uh, is a hit. It's an opportunity uh, as well to to face this problem and to communicate and to uh, to build the narrative of this awareness architecture. Um, the other thing is the um, private companies because, uh, for example, when we, um, we did these seminaries uh, uh, organized with uh, the architectural and Ar architects uh, council 
of, of Padua, but uh, of course in Italy, for example, each town has uh, its uh, archi architect council. Um, the company are very interesting because they, they, of course, they, it's a market for, for them. It's, uh, it's uh, a economic um, convenience, uh, convenience for them. So um, the, um, the interaction between the, um, the professionals, uh, professionals, sorry, uh, architect or engineer uh, councils and companies uh, can build a, an important critic mass on our business uh, market uh, to, to improve this uh, sensibilization on waste architecture. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to make a comment that when uh, I first came to South Africa many years ago, over 20 years ago, no one knew uh, this profession called environmental engineering. We were, uh, or enver the environmental engineer, we were hybrids, kind of aliens from uh, another world. And uh, uh, honestly, I, I, as a pioneer uh, environmental engineer in, uh, in South Africa, um, I've really sensitized and motivated uh, in our professional council and, and so on. So now I'm a bit concerned, not concerned, but I, I will watch with great interest how uh, the architects come into contact or into, into the, uh, the game of uh, waste management uh, uh, with this new hybrid of uh, waste architecture. So it's very important that the synergy, synergistic approach is, uh, is taken, not uh, as uh, Antonio correctly said, not a, an antagonist approach. Um, but most importantly, it's important that both uh, uh, engineers, uh, in fact, I find the same limitations of civil engineers as well as uh, architects uh, in approaching uh, environmental problems. So it's important that that barrier of knowing what system you are, uh, you are uh, uh, building or you are redesigning uh, needs to happen because uh, sometimes people approach a, a landfill site without understanding exactly what are, uh, the, uh, what are the processes that occur in that landfill. And uh, so it's not only just the form, it's not only just the infrastructure, um, but it's also understanding the system in, in its entirety, as you correctly, both of you, in fact, uh, said during the, the, the presentation. I think let's move to the next. We are running a bit uh, out of uh, time, and I'm worried that there might be not enough time for uh, opening a, a discussion. So I will ask uh, uh, Logan Moodley to uh, share, if you can, Logan, if you can share your screen from your side, please. Okay, when you, when you want, please uh, go ahead. Logan? Um, can we get there? Yes, yes, we can see everything. And will you introduce yourself? I understand. Uh, can you see my slide there? Yes. Yes, we okay. can. Thank yes, you. we can. Please go okay. ahead. Okay. Good day, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, and to uh, Prof. Troyce as well. Uh, just to introduce myself very briefly. Uh, I was kind of hijacked by Christina the other day just to do a talk, so I'm going to try my level best. Uh, my name's Logan Moodley. Uh, for my sins, I'm the Deputy Head of Plant and Engineering. So I work for the local municipality. Uh, and my job is to ensure that we uh, can design, operate, and manage landfill sites as well as transfer stations. Uh, so I'm a waste engineer. All right. Uh, so I've, I've put together a series of slides, which is perhaps not fully aligned to the talk today, but it's more on the concepts and the experiences uh, of how uh, we have adopted uh, best practices on our landfill sites, particularly dealing with the pressures around from communities. All right. I'm trying to get to my slide. All right, just to set the scene, um, South Africa at large, we're still highly dependent on, on landfills, right? Uh, there have been much aspirations over the number of years to move away from landfill 
uh, and focus on more higher order waste management solutions. Uh, but luck may have it that it we some 10, 15 years down the line and we're still highly dependent on this traditional form of waste disposal. Uh, I put a little picture across there that you can see uh, across the South African map. Uh, we're based in KwaZulu Natal, KZN, um, and there's about 100, there's about 10% of the waste that we take across the country. Uh, but essentially, we're in the order of about uh, just under 40% or so that is dependent on landfill facilities. Now, us as waste engineers uh, working for the city, there's tough financial times. Uh, and more often, we find ourselves uh, with competing interests against other trading services. There's pressures for, for water, uh, clean sanitization, uh, electricity, power, roads. And often, you know, when it comes to the share of the budget for, for managing waste, we're probably about six or seven down the line. So we have to make do what we have. So us engineers uh, love problems. Uh, so we've applied ourselves from the concept of how could we do business uh, on waste uh, in a smarter yet more efficient way with the little resources that we have. And so from there, uh, the concept of you know a landfill not being a liability, but in but in essence being viewed as an asset, uh, an asset and one that will add value back to the city. Uh, and an asset is also considered an environmental value add. So on, on those bases there, we started looking at concepts of, of now transforming the mindset of the public. Um, if you had to look in the South African press of recently, you know, there's landfill fires, there's uh, communities uprising due to odors on the landfill side. People don't want these facilities in the back door, the NIMBY concept. Um, so we've tried in order to try and improve and get this progressive improvement done across uh, is to integrate solutions as engineers uh, to incorporate social benefits, uh, you know, try and create opportunities of linking the communities uh, for job creation so you can build social uh, capital. And along those little uh, changes that we put in place, uh, we've led to concepts where you know we've we managed to have operational optimization of our facilities. Uh, at the same time, we've incorporated now global risks in our planning and managing that better in terms of climate change. I'll chat later on landfill gas extraction and landfill gas management, as well as carbon sequestration. Uh, so using that, um, we've all started off somewhere. So these facilities on these landfill sites in Etiquini in Durban going back some 20, 25 years, looked something like on that picture you see now, which is an unpleasant, I saw, uh, I don't want that in my backyard concept. So by adopting simple civil engineering practices, that's what we learned in varsity, uh, on how to do an earthworks operation, how to use you know, a typical dozer to compact cover shape, etc. cetera, we've, we've transformed. You know? uh, we've, we've taken that ugly saw dump look um, and we've created a facility where you know, it looks more of a construction site, a bit more pleasing on the eye. And you can see from the background, there's houses. So uh, we, we, we basically about 20 meters away. This is at the Basasa Road landfill. So this is where it all started and was conceived. Okay. Uh, and with that type of momentum, uh, we wanted to instill a model whereby, you know, we could have this sustainable approach, some sort of loop engineering design that we could show back to the community that it's not only a landfill, you know, it, it could be an area of, of, uh, of best practices where we could mitigate, uh, you know, the nuances on the environment. Um, so with that, this is the Marin Hill landfill, uh, where we conceived a conservancy status. So, you know, at the time going back in the early 2000s, 2002, um, never have we heard before of having a waste site or landfill but at the same time, it's recognized as a conservation or an ecological importance facility. So with that, we, we use the natural landscape. Um, you know, we wanted a cell where we could put waste in. Uh, at the same time, we could have an old cell that is, you know, rehabilitated. And that rehabilitation is done using local indigenous material. So there's no need to purchase, you know, plants and flora and fauna, etc. So uh, with, that, with that type of mindset, you could see, you know, we, 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 we've created this, 
this area of, of least impact. Um, and we've also allowed for education on the side where we could bring communities and you know delegates and start promoting uh, you know um, uh, the new way of managing waste on facilities uh, other than you know just it's it's a dump or a landfill um, over and above having the aesthetic pleasing you know eye look uh, we had to give attention to the other nuisance factors um, or the negatives uh, and that's mainly your landfill gas emissions um, the liquid emissions being the land for leachate and odors from uh, the fresh waste coming in. And then we build best practice uh, mitigation measures around each. So I'm going to flash through a couple of slides uh, on, on those. So you can see from all our facilities, the engineered sanitary landfills, we all have a uh, single composite lining, be it a clay liner overlain by an HDPE or uh, uh, a GCL replacing a, a clay liner. Uh, and then we've got protection to the groundwater. Um, you know, these sites as well, uh, like I said, they're in close proximity to households. Uh, so there's an earthworks operation that clearly defines activities. Uh, for example, you know, there's, a, there's a rubble uh, management area where the rubble is used for constructing roads on the site. Uh, there's a disposal area that is quite tight where we manage the you know, dust suppression, uh, et cetera. And there's a whole rehabilitated area so the community at large could see this site, you know, progressively uh, rehabilitated with the local indigenous, uh, rather than waiting some 20, 30 years down the line, then to enforce these measures, right? Uh, so this is the newest landfill, which is a Buffalo's dry landfill. Uh, the heading goes aesthetic. So uh, in a very colloquial way of expressing this, it's almost like a hamburger. Um, you know, if it looks good on the eye, you can see it's, you know, it's green, it's shaped well. Uh, if it smells good, there isn't any odors, um, so it must be good. So that, that hamburger concept has been something that we've adopted on all our facilities where we can show the natural landscape which is integrated with the, uh, the waste disposal operations. Right? Um, and I'll talk later on on how we manage the leachate. Okay, so it all started off here where we, we actually go out into the, the landfill footprint and the buffer and we capture all the indigenous seedlings um, and they within the 20k radius um, and where we can propagate material from, you know, from, uh, from origin into its final placement, we would do that. So there's le least environmental uh, disturbance. Where we can't, then we would put it into, our, into what we call a plant rescue unit, which is called Prunet. That's essentially a, a local endemic uh, rehabilitation nursery. And we grow the plants in there in a very hardened environment. And, and once we uh, complete cells, we take that material and then rehabilitate uh, uh, the landfill, right? So at, at, at the current, we've got each landfill site uh, across the city has a, uh, a, a Prunet nursery. And we're probably sitting in the order of about, in terms of South African rands, about 3 million rands worth of plants at any time uh, that we have on hand, all right? Um, you can see that's, that's put at Marinil Landfill. That's one of the clothes at cell one uh, that's been rehabilitated with all this coastal endemic bush. Um, and you can see it's an area of least disturbance. Uh, there's any, there isn't stress on the environment. You can see everything's green and lush and thriving. Uh, it's another pick as well. Um, and it's a, um, an aerial shot showing how this landfill, you know, over time um, can, can you know, integrate with the biodiversity and uh, ecological principles. Okay, order as well. Um, we've done a lot of work with the local community uh, using different enzyme solutions. There's an online system uh, that we use depending on the wind direction. We can manage the odor. So anytime we could pick the phone up and we could phone the neighbors and say at two o'clock, can they expect uh, an odor coming through, but we're managing it, all right? So you can see uh, on the top area, that's the community up front, all upset about odor. And then once we introduce these principles, you know, there's happy smiles on the faces. Okay, that's just showing you the odor modeling prune that we do have on these sites. Uh, the order controls and all the boundaries in terms of uh, control and management. Uh, and then landfill gas. Uh, landfill gas, uh, this goes back to first principles, back at varsity and understanding the biological degradation of waste. Uh, so we've used this, um, you know, to work to our benefit in terms of the global risk facing uh, climate change. 
um, uh, and using methane uh, in order to uh, enhance the potential for uh, energy recovery. Okay, so this led to Africa's first landfill clean development mechanism project, conceived at the Marin Hill Landfill. Uh, we're currently extracting on about um, uh, just over 750 cubes of gas uh, an hour, uh, um, sufficient enough to produce one megawatt of electricity. Uh, and those concepts from there led to the bigger side, the Sasso Road. We've got seven and a half megawatts of electricity at current now, uh, and just under 4,000 cubes of gas. Um, and that in total, if you take both the projects and you add it up, we just under 4,000 of households that we're producing uh, electricity for. And on our smaller sites where we don't have enough gas to justify the energy production, we merely extract the gas and we flare it. Okay, uh, this goes back to the very simple line diagram. So us engineers have focused on maximizing landfill gas extraction, so there'll be least impact on the environment in terms of global warming. Uh, we studied various types of gas wells, from vertical wells to horizontal wells. Um, we found innovative ways of uh, installing these wells in our facilities. Um, yeah, so you can see we've put these vertical wells in. They produce about 40 cubes of gas an hour. Uh, per well, uh, but it's very short-lived. Um, we've done further research. Uh, we put in, you know, cost-effective wells, horizontal gas wells, um, which is half the cost of these vertical wells and produce more than double uh, gas flows. Uh, this is managed to uh, ensure that we could honor our PDD requirements in terms of our gas modeling. Okay. Um, in terms of the construction of these facilities on the site, there's been a lot of quality assurance done, uh, making sure that you know we, we get the gas in terms of the insulation works. Um, you can see uh, there's inspections on the site, making sure that the, you know, the gas drainages are a certain thickness so we can get the effective extraction. Uh, you know, then after the wells are put in, uh, the whole series of uh, collection networks monitoring, control, and eventually, uh, you know, uh, tracking what the performance is. Um, all right, so that's Pisasa Road, uh, the biggest site, seven and a half megawatts of electricity. Um, and these are some of the stats that I've just put up to show you, you know, the improvements over time. Uh, during the winter months, that's when we peak in terms of our tariffs, uh, over four million rands worth of electricity a month uh, generated. Uh, over 2.7 million tons of CO2 equivalent destroyed and in the order of 4,000 cubes of gas extracted. All right, and on leachate, so we did the gas on the leachate side. Uh, we've come a long way in terms of understanding leachate treatment. Um, and with that, uh, this is a low level landfill concept. So this whole game now is about leachate management and controlling clean and dirty waters. Um, let's very quickly go on. This was conceived uh, under Christina Troyes at the time at the Varsity. Uh, we're looking at sequence batch reacting where we extracting, where we um, uh, drain the leachate from the cells and then we put it through a series of uh, treatment, essentially just decreasing the loading um, and then further uh, polishing through reed beds. And that treated effluent is then put back on the site um, in terms of dust suppression and irrigation onto all the rehab areas. Um, and then from, from there, it grew to the bigger sites. Uh, so this is Buffalo's Dry, it's a bigger site. Uh, uh, we treat up to 2,000 cubic meters of uh, leachate a day, uh, but uh, it's based on the same principles as Marin Hill. All right, and Lovo Landfill, um, that's a site that's opened recently. We put the same treatment plant, but there's been a lot of announcements done on trying to further polish and clean the leachate in reducing the organic uh, loading. Um, so there's this the research being done with different species of reeds, phlegmites, bulrushes, uh, etc., to see you know which one has a better cleaning potential or a combination of all. All right. Um, and then, yeah, that's my son playing around with dust suppression. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then uh, after having all these best practices on the site, uh, over the last three years, I would say, there's been a significant awakening from communities. Even though we have this, there's still one more. Um, so we call it the banana syndrome. It's almost similar to NIMBY. Banana meaning build anything, nowhere and near anybody. So. You thought having landfills in your backyard is a problem. Even having them far away from people is even a problem again. 
Um, and then we've got, a, a, as, as a city, we face with other pressures. Uh, climate change, this was taken in 2016, and we had this massive high intensity rainfalls. And with rainfall comes, you know, all the waste being washed from the upper captions uh, down to this lower areas. And then these landfills, the ones that we operate, get overwhelmed with uh, these uh, heavy rainfall and then leachate systems overflow. Uh, there's damage to lining systems. It's any landfill engineer's nightmare. Okay, so we said, no, it's fine. We can deal with this. Uh, so we then move from the closed loop concept into a transformation concept, right? So we wanted to take what we have and announce it further, right? Uh, and to have this radical shift in having resilient and sustainable solutions. So using the Marion Hill concept, like I showed you, which is this whole green naturalistic uh, approach of, uh, of engineering landfill nowadays to the Buffalo Dry landfill, which is this transformation concept. Essentially what it is, uh, is to you know, eat away at this pie very slowly and to have progressive improvement uh, to make sure you keep the community happy to make sure you address climate change, to make sure you can try and generate some revenue for the city, um, and then eventually get to a state where it's a, uh, you have a, a, a flexible set of options uh, that you can manage the ecosystems and the environment and excel. Okay, so I, uh, so I mentioned this earlier, uh, it's about moving away from business as usual, uh, um, so the concept we've ad adapted where we brought uh, endangered species onto the site. Um, um, and you know, we've taken all the, all the plants and pruned concept and we've announced it further to deal with stormwater attenuation, stormwater control, uh, you know, uh, creating habitats for reptiles. Um, um, and then not only utilizing the, the flora and fauna, but utilizing the sand, topsoil, and the clay back into the system, right? Um, and th that gave birth to the Buffalo's Dry Reforestation Project. It was it won a flagship, uh, you know, uh, innovative concept with the climate change COP event. Uh, we found planted out to date over uh, seven hundred thousand trees uh, on this on 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 the land for property, um, and it's given rise to the to community adaptation uh, and ecosystem based adaptation. So essentially, it's it's using climate change as a driver to deal with the social you know, ills of the past uh, and to ensure the livelihoods of the local community improve, all right? Uh, not only in terms of giving them money, but also credits where they could trade for food, trade for school fees, trade for bicycles. Uh, so it's been a massive success story for us, all right? And again, it, 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 it was planted on the seeds of uh, Marin Hill and for Okay, these are some of the pictures showing you, you know, the success where uh, we publish papers on this. Um, you know, there's, there's education still ongoing. There's disadvantaged contractors um, that actually come from, you know, um, just having a slasher and a and, and a and a lawnmower to to today having a team of of employed uh, staff with a bucky and uh, equipment. So it's it's grown. All right. Um, and uh, whilst this is happening on the side, this transformation concept on these landfills in, in working, uh, uh, you know, trying to get more bang for your buck for the city is that we uh, extracting the topsoil, putting it back on the rear barriers. We're using the cover material so we don't purchase. Uh, we're hitting the rock, which we're using for drainage material and all the construction works. The clay is put back for capping and lining. Uh, and in doing so, we open up the airspace of the property. So we're doing that at today's cost and not getting an outside consult, uh, an outside contractor to do it later on. Um, and at the same time, there's improvement of uh, stability uh, for the landfill. All right, so uh, in some weird way, these best practices have shown that um, to the decision makers in the cities that we can still have these sites and you can can operate them at fairly low operating cost in uh, comparison to the norm. Uh, we've worked out just you know, around about 12 US dollars per ton for, for landfill uh, disposal as opposed you know, elsewhere where it's in, in the order about 15 to 20. Um, uh, but these landfill sites now are becoming you know, more aware. There's more conscious uh, awareness, uh, not only from other landfill operators in the country, but across Africa. 
uh, where these concepts are being taken across uh, and it's used as an, a knowledge hub or an education hub on how to you know move away from a dump to a landfill and to an or to a facility that is now embracing the integrated ways of doing business all right so that's in a nutshell um you can take questions afterwards so thank you very much thank you very much logan so you can you can start you can stop sharing uh, the video And uh, so the very first question is for you. Uh, um, so now you have gone, so this is an example of, uh, of uh, what environmental engineers can do. Now it's time for uh, uh, our uh, landfill sites in Durban to actually go to the next level um, by, by involving also waste architecture. Um, as the last stage of your transformation <laughs> um, in, of course, in, in conjunction with, uh, with the environmental engineering uh, uh, solutions. So the question that I'd like to ask you, uh, Logan, from your uh, um, institutional capacity. Uh, so do you think that uh, there is a, 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 an opportunity for waste architecture to be embedded uh, into the um, um, uh, into environmental management policy. So do you, do you see uh, what knowledge or what expertise uh, do you feel uh, are required uh, to embed the waste architecture into environmental management policy? Yes, I think there's, there's definitely room for, for improvement. Uh, I like one of the slides from the previous uh, speakers where he says, you know, we almost work in silos as engineers and architects. Uh, I think it's time that we come together and just from a city perspective, um, we're essentially an essential service provider and the layman out at home, all they know is the waste is put out and it goes somewhere. They have no idea or no clue of, of a landfill. Uh, some do, but I think we have a responsibility as environmental engineers mm -hmm. from, a, from a city perspective is to join forces with the likes of the architects in this space. And there's definitely room for opportunity, I can say, in how we can work together in packaging these uh, new concepts uh, in, in a very simple format and it's easy, uh, easily uh, can be communicated back to the masses out, which is the residents. Uh, and if we can get that right, and I think we can then try to win over the higher decision makers in the city to buy into these concepts. Uh, and I'm just thinking out aloud, you know, and brainstorming and that the traditional look of a landfill is one of a landscape, you know, it's cut and clean and it's almost up like a cherished fashion. But if we could, you know, put a model together, put those concepts and then show the decision makers, you know, and get that buy in. I think that's the first starting point, Christina. So do uh, you think the, that, uh, uh, Logan, if I can follow up, uh, with another question is, do you think that waste architecture can actually indeed become an element, fundamental element in the decision-making process at municipal level? So it's not only landfills, it's obviously uh, um, industrial plants like, um, like your transfer station, like your, uh, your uh, toilet facilities, your wastewater treatment plants. I mean, there is a lot of infrastructure that falls mm. under the, the perimeters of municipal waste infrastructure that can certainly uh, would do much better if uh, in the decision-making process uh, uh, you could actually have not only expert environmental engineers and civil engineers, but also expert uh, waste architecture or architects. In general, I definitely agree. I'm not, I'm not shooting it down. Uh, I'm just saying I think that the concept for the city probably is still new. Uh, we need to get the message out. Um, and, and if you can create maybe a platform through, you know, the university and the linkages with the with the city's office in putting this concept forward, then you can definitely take it back to the different business units. So there's definitely room for improvement. I think you know, so. Uh, by me joining on today, there was, there was a few concepts that I didn't know. I'm actually learning. So it's, it's the right time. Uh, it's the right time to plant that seed. 
and, 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 and the more we can promote it and bring uh, the other engineers on board, then I'm sure we can actually get projects off the ground. And we have projects off the ground, then we can, you know, make more uh, progress. Thanks, Christina. Well, um, I think one last question that we I had prepared was uh, about curriculum development. Uh, it's clear that here in South Africa, I think we are uh, the our university is become is certainly one of the pioneers, if it's not the first university to introduce this concept of waste architecture in, uh, in our curriculum at master level as part of the coursework master in waste and resources management. But it seems also from what Stefano has, uh, has presented to us that also Padova in Italy is one of the leading, um, the leading universities for uh, introducing um, this type of uh, um, curricula within, sorry, to this type of subjects within our, uh, or your curriculum. Um, do you see, just a very short uh, comment, uh, Stefano, so do you see it uh, more uh, adapted for uh, a postgraduate course or for a, a bachelor, uh, so also a basic, basic course uh, in uh, university uh, or not? No, I, it's difficult to, to answer because uh, I think that, uh, Probably in our in our times uh, um, coming from high schools, uh, I think uh, that uh, a bachelor course uh, might might focus on on some basic things, uh, basic value uh, topics uh, about architecture, design, engineering major, um, the, the fundamentals, uh, thoughts, and uh, Maybe uh, maybe it's better to, to set this uh, um, curricula offer in a, a post bachelor and a, a master yes. degree. Um, anyway, for example, uh, in Italy here in Padua, we uh, we don't have this uh, distinction. We have the the five years uh, all together, so we don't have bachelor and uh, and master. We have a unique master degree curricula in uh, building engineer architecture. And we are also uh, among the few universities in Italy that uh, bring this uh, past solution um, and didn't accept the new reform of the three plus two years. So, for example, for in our case, uh, uh, we, we can set this uh, course uh, in, uh, in the third or in the fourth or five year, but we, we don't have the bachelor uh, curriculum. So. So there are only, sorry Stefano, so if I, I, I cut you short because yeah. there are only 10 minutes and they just reminded us that the, the session closes at 11. So I would like to actually invite uh, questions from the, from the audience. Um, I can see that there are still a lot of, uh, lot of uh, colleagues that are uh, listening um, to our presentations. So it, uh, if you wanted to un, uh, unmute your... Um, yes and ask a question, so please uh, uh, feel, free, feel free to do so. Um, and let's open, uh, let, let's open the session for questions. Well, um, I'm not sure if, uh, um, if you are all uh, Able I to, think that uh, uh, someone ask for the presentation, for example, I think it's possible. And uh, if someone want to write also to our, I think, email address, I can also send uh, some link for the publication mm -hmm. for the scientific uh, uh, outputs. <clears throat> yes, so also um, the session has been recorded and uh, uh, presumably will be available on, on the website, but the person who asked the question is one of our uh, master students in the coursework master, so I will be able to make, link him uh, uh, with you, Stefano. Okay, with pleasure. Um, so I can see that uh, there are also other comments from, from the audience. Um, Antonio, I, I, um, so I, I take, the opportunity to ask you a question regarding the curriculum development. You have been uh, uh, developing the, this course Waste Architecture uh, for our coursework master and I wonder uh, uh, if you can shed some, uh, 
some comments. Um, I, I, I agree with that. that needed. I agree with Stefanos. Um, I think in an early stage of the formation of, uh, of an architect, um, I think it's maybe uh, better to highlight other concepts like uh, uh, sustainability or like a more broad and general uh, topics, uh, sustainability, multidisciplinarity. Um, um, we, we, we at, the, at the end of the day, when we, when we work um, about cities, uh, or we have cities uh, to deal with, uh, we have to engage with a number of uh, stakeholders and, and uh, it's very important to make students understand that uh, this is this is the, the the best way, the only way. Uh, actually, uh, this is the uh, this is no longer you know the image of the architect in the twenties in front of, of the drawing board, solving you know <laughs> like a city like uh, Le Corbusier or like that's that this is a, a very complex system now, and and the sooner the students uh, get that reality. And the, 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 the sooner they can face other um, uh, more complex uh, topics. I think dealing with sustainability in first time, like uh, awakening uh, uh, awareness uh, on, on young people of what the impact of their work can, can uh, have on the environment and taking it from there in a later stage of, of, the, of the curriculum. I think that's maybe the best way to uh, there's a lot of complex in this way, architects. As you can see, I, uh, my presentation was maybe more um, uh, practical and tried to to unwrap the the concept. Uh, Stefano's presentation was was uh, very deep, and I think we need thinkers to uh, to support uh, the whole narrative. Otherwise, the narrative is superficial and weak. So we we need that kind of approach. We need we need to to develop. Um, architects uh, that are solid, they have a solid uh, uh, thinking uh, uh, approach to deal them with different uh, different situations and the waste architecture is basically uh, one of these situations that require a very um, uh, closer look, a very close um, uh, or deep understanding of the processes in the cities and, and the process and construction Technologies and 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 the ways of the how to minimize waste and how to so I think um, I think we need um, this sort of uh, foundation uh, in in teaching um, uh, architecture. Uh, but uh, I mean, when we look at um, sustainability, for me, it's equally important to look at. I mean, I, I'm actually teaching in engineering, uh, so for me, it's equally important if we look at the School of Engineering or the School of Architecture. So at that, at that early stage of the, of the, of the studies, it's, it's, for me, it's equal. And at the same time, as I mentioned before, we need a solid um, base and, and, uh, of, of thinking. Uh, if I may, uh, Antonio, if I may make a follow-up comment to, to your... Uh, um, it's also a, a how... It's important, it, it's, it's, it's not only... Um, to create the, the professionality or the, the professional uh, uh, expertise of uh, architects uh, that look specifically at environmental uh, uh, solutions or waste, uh, uh, waste um, uh, plants or uh, waste infrastructure. It also is how people see waste. Because uh, um, I do not want, and also how decision makers see the value of, uh, of that property because, it, 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 you know, it comes uh, um, waste to value uh, and waste to resource it comes end on end with the concept of uh, the intro introduction of waste architecture. Because uh, uh, again, there is a, uh, I, I do not want to waste, to wait other uh, 20 years for, uh, so we waited 20 years to motivate South African government, municipalities, of the need of introducing an environmental engineer, an environmental engineering concepts in the decision-making process of, uh, of waste management. Now, we cannot wait other 20 years uh, 
to create the demand and the, in, uh, the importance to, uh, to, to edu in a way, educate our decision making makers and politicians of the importance uh, of waste architecture. Because we would then defeat the purpose. So to me, it's uh, the, the two things hand come, must come end to end. We need to build and uh, uh, create this new architect that is kind of an hybrid between a civil engineer and environmental engineer, and of course, an architect um, that has a specific focus on, uh, on, on waste management systems and infrastructure. But also we needed to understand that once uh, that project is designed, conceptualized, or even rebuilt and, uh, and redesigned or uh, restored, if you like, uh, by a waste architect, then of course uh, increases its value, increases its, uh, its um, acceptability by the community and so on and so forth. Because otherwise, uh, if you don't create the demand, then you will certainly have a problem in, in uh, having to accept, uh, in, 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 create, in, in making sure that, that this new, um, new figure, professional figure is in fact indeed accepted. Uh, you can have a very beautiful uh, pictures, but at the end of the day, uh, if the municipalities, for example, I'm talking of South Africa, of course, I'm, I'm not uh, talking of Italy, but presumably it's very similar uh, across the world. So it's very important that while we create this new skill and we embed this new skill into our curricula at both engineering and uh, architectural level, we also uh, work on behavioral change, how people see waste. So it's also a, a social, societal change that is, uh, that is required in my mind. And most yeah, important I'll, I'll, I'll the is with the poli politicians. That's, that's also very important. Yeah, I agree completely with you. I mean, I wanted to point out the fact, I, I think in, 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 the, in the teaching of these uh, topics, um, what I find with two predominant trends, the Anglo-Saxon trend is highly specialized. They produce experts at a very young age and they put them on the market. So it's kind of market driven uh, education. And then we have the Mediterranean uh, approach where we, we look more at the expertise rather than the, um, marketing the profession. So we have more integrated, integrated education. I mean, like an architect, uh, I was I, I studied in Italy for one year. I, I, I graduated in Spain. Uh, the the concept is that any structure that have uh, that has to do to, to deal with people requires an architect. That means that the architect is responsible to design and uh, the, the, to produce a, a structural analysis of a theater, uh, of a, of a hospital, anything that has to do with with people. It uh, belongs to the architect. So the architect needs to uh, uh, acquire this body of, of knowledge. It has to act, uh, uh, structural analysis, um, and mechanical, and electrical, and plumbing. So all these components that are going to create at the end of the day, this um, ecosystem where people interact, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, architecture oriented or architecture responsibility. Uh, now, I think we maybe because actually the one that actually uh, it's, it's prevalent is, is the Anglo-Saxon model. I think we need to maybe to, to, to step back a little bit and create professionals that are able to look at the bigger picture. And, 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 and this way we need to maybe look at the way uh, high education is organized. Um, I think the trend is it's more and more oriented to supply the market with uh, specialized professional. And that makes uh, people being jealous of their own, like the little, uh, the little uh, piece of, of, of um, competence. And, and we create silo uh, um, relationship in terms of dealing with this complex system. Uh, that, that it's evident that we need integration, uh, professional integration. I need to stop you, Antonio, unfortunately, because the session is, uh, is closing now. Uh, so I, I really would like to thank the, uh, our guest speakers today, um, Antonio Blanco Montero, Stefano Santoniadis, uh, and Logan Moodley for participating, and of course, uh, Rentec for uh, 
enabling uh, this, uh, this discussion. It's a very good opportunity because we, uh, through RemTech, we, will, we have started a north-south uh, um, channel of communication and uh, uh, we hope, in fact, indeed, to continue our collaboration in the future with the RemTech Expo and uh, possibly having uh, another uh, more longer uh, session all dedicated to uh, waste architecture in the future, perhaps in the new year, and possibly in presence, maybe. Uh, we, hope, we hope for that. So I um, really have to say goodbye to everyone. And again, thanks, uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, the um, recordings uh, will be available on the website, uh, I'm sure, in the next, uh, in the next days. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Bye-bye.